Welcome to the pre-lab video for the Limiting Reactant Lab. So far in this course, you've done several shorter labs and this will be your first full lab with a full lab report. Let's take a look at what this lab is all about. The purpose of this lab is to carry out a chemical reaction that involves a limiting reactant and a reactant in excess. You will be able to predict the limiting reactant using stoichiometry. And this lab pulls together almost all of the important topics from the lessons in this unit of Chemistry 11. Since this lab is all about limiting reactants, let's quickly review what a limiting reactant is. A limiting reactant is the reactant that makes the least amount of product. In other words, it's the reactant that limits the yield of the product. Another way of saying that is it's the reactant that limits the mass of product that can be made. Many reactions in industry or in everyday life do not occur in exact amounts. In other words, they don't occur in exactly the right ratios of reactants based on the mole ratios required by the chemical reaction equation. Instead, one reactant may be present in excess for a number of different reasons. Sometimes the reactant is present in excess in nature, or in industry, it could be present in excess to save on costs. If the other reactant is expensive or rare, we want to fully use it up, so we ensure that we react it with another chemical in excess. In large-scale react reactions, such as in industry, chemicals are added together using columns called chemical feeders, which can measure out exact amounts of chemicals as needed. Having only one reactant that needs to be carefully analyzed using this specialized equipment may be more cost-effective. Not having to add both chemical reactants in exact amounts can be simpler and easier to control. Reacting one chemical in excess can be a good option, especially if the excess chemical is easy to isolate from the product in the end. Let's take a look at a simple reaction involving a limiting reactant. Take the reaction of carbon and oxygen gas to form carbon dioxide. Here we'll see that we have a one-to-one -one ratio of reactants. So we have one mole of carbon reacting with one mole of oxygen gas to form one mole of carbon dioxide as a product. If we were given these amounts here, let's say we had five carbon atoms reacting with ten oxygen molecules, which of these two reactants would be the limiting reactant and which would be in excess? If you look at this for a moment, you'll see that we have five carbon atoms and we have double the amount of oxygen molecules. So each one of these carbon atoms will combine with one molecule of oxygen to form one molecule of carbon dioxide gas. So if we only have five carbon atoms and we have ten oxygen molecules, that makes carbon the limiting reactant. Each one of those molecules, uh, or sorry, each one of those carbon atoms will react with the oxygen gas, and that will give us a total of five carbon dioxide mole molecules because we started with five carbon atoms. The oxygen molecules are in excess, and as a result, we'll also have excess oxygen molecules in our product mixture. So this is a nice simple example of a chemical reaction involving a limiting reactant and an excess reactant. Let's take a look at the lab that you're about to do. In this lab, the reactants are solid potassium dichromate and solid silver nitrate. Now because these are both solids, we will dissolve each solid reactant in water so that they can be mixed together easily. When these reactants are combined, they produce silver dichromate, which is a solid product, and potassium nitrate, which will be an aqueous solution. The purpose of this lab is for you to predict the limiting reactant and the reactant in excess. You will be given the masses of each of the reactants and you will need to determine before starting the lab which reactant is the limiting reactant and which is in excess. Once you've determined the limiting reactant, you'll be able to determine the theoretical yield of the products. In this lab, we're only interested in the solid product silver dichromate and you'll be able to find out how much silver dichromate the reaction should yield based on the amount of limiting reactant used. Remember that theoretical yield means how much you should get in theory. So to find the limiting reactant, you'll first need to balance the reaction equation. 
then you'll need to do some conversions in order to determine the limiting reactant and to predict the theoretical yield of the product. Remember that when we start with a mass in grams, we need to convert to moles in order to cross the mole bridge. So in this reaction, we'll be given the grams of the reactants, and we can figure out their molar masses in order to convert from grams to moles of reactant. Once we're in moles of reactant, we can cross the mole bridge to moles of product, and then we can use the molar mass of the product to convert from moles to grams of product. There's a few calculations that you need to do, but we've learned this process um, in this unit of Chemistry 11, and so this will be applying it now in the lab. Let's look quickly at the experimental procedure for this lab. This will help you understand what's going to happen, and it will help you as you read over the lab itself. So first off, we start with our two reactants, potassium dichromate and silver nitrate. In the beginning, we have them as solid reactants. So we dissolve those solid reactants in water to create aqueous solutions. These solutions can then be mixed together to react. We mix these two solutions together and we form some products. When our reaction is complete, we are left with a mixture containing the solid silver dichromate product and an aqueous solution of potassium nitrate. The solid that's formed by mixing aqueous solutions is called a precipitate. And to isolate the solid product, we're going to have to use a separation technique. The technique that we choose is gravity filtration. We filter the solid product out, and using a piece of filter paper in a funnel, the solid product will be trapped in our filter paper and the remaining liquid will travel through the funnel. This leftover liquid is called the filtrate and it's made up of potassium nitrate as well as any excess reactant that was not reacted. Once we have our solid product, we can dry that product out and weigh it. Remember that we predicted how much product we should get and now at the end of the lab we can see how much product we actually got. So the purpose of the lab to predict the limiting reactant, to predict the theoretical yield of the product based on the limiting reactant, and then finally to measure the actual yield of the product and compare it to the theoretical yield. And we'll calculate the percentage yield as a way of comparing the actual and the theoretical masses of our product. You might recall the calculation for percentage yield. It's equal to the actual yield, which is how much you got, divided by the theoretical yield, how much you should have got, times by 100% to report that answer as a percentage. All right, you're ready to read over the lab, complete the pre-lab questions, and once you're done that, you're ready to start the lab. Have fun!